What's up guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Travis, this is my dad, his name is Rick, and in this video we're going to be doing the floor pans on this 60 El Camino. That's the whole video is just floor pans because it's going to take a lot of time. So let me show you the floor pans we're dealing with here. If you haven't watched the previous videos on this, definitely go watch them. We put another motor and tranny in it. This is a stock 327 with a 350 turbo. Pretty much had to rebuild the entire front end. Have a couple videos on it, I think four or five. Go check them out after this one, of course. So. Here's what we're dealing with. I'll open this door and show you. So every single one of these floor pans is gone. Yeah, passenger side front, driver side front, rear driver, and passenger rear. They're all gone. I mean, this is where the seat belt bolted to. Over here we got holes. So then there's Boo supervising as always, making his cameo. So we're gonna make our lines out here and we're gonna try and strategically do it, it's gonna be difficult because you always wanna do the least amount of bends possible because it's difficult, but we're not gonna get around it with these because even though there is floor here, you can see where it's pitted and that metal is basically thin even though it's not through yet. You can see it pits out until it does that. So this is thin even though it's here. So we're gonna have to cut up some and, he and go across, but what's difficult is making these right here flat is the easiest and then you can put some bead rolls in it see how these have bead rolls so we'll be able to put bead rolls in it but remaking these curves right here uh, is, is kind of a it's it's tricky but we're gonna have to cut up some to get to good metal uh, otherwise you're just gonna be welding through it you'll try and put a tack and it'll just make a hole and you have to have thick enough metal to weld to so that you can actually weld it in instead of just making holes every time you click that welder we did do our background because i thought well obviously buying the floors is smarter yeah. to, to do than anything but after i looked up the floors they didn't seem to be they didn't seem to be much there not much molded it was going to cost almost $600 for the front and the back, and it wasn't, it wasn't even enough to do the whole thing anyway. That's why I kind of opted to do it myself, because really the bins that I thought if the quality of the bins was super good, then that would probably be the smartest way to go. Didn't see that. And it was $600. So we bought a 4x8 sheet of 18 gauge for $100. And a lot of labor. <laughs> a lot of labor. So we saved $500, but we're going to pay for it in time. <laughs> Here's our 4 by 8 sheet of metal that we'll cut the pans out, lay them on here, you know, draw it out, cut it out, and then make our bends and everything. And we have a, uh, we do have a bead roller that we have from Harbor Freight that's good enough for making bead rolls and sheet metal. I mean, it's not the most heavy duty you could get that makes perfect, but definitely does good enough for what we need. There's a couple different ways you can cut the floors out. One of them would be a plasma cutter. I don't even know what comes out of it, plasma maybe, but these plasma cutters will cut steel like butter. Even if your hand is steady, it's still doing this when you're cutting it. And when you're freehanding it, you'll get a you'll cut it like this. And when you go to, to line your new pan up against it, uh, your pan will be straight, but your cut on the floor will be all wiggly and you're gonna have a bunch of gaps you have to fill in with the welder. So the best thing to do is use an, an actual cutting wheel because when you cut it, it's gonna cut it nice and straight even if your hand is kinda of doing this a little bit. So these two floors are cut out, and when I'm cutting, just as like a pro tip, as soon as I feel the blade go through, I just keep moving. I don't go in and go all the way, because your blade, right, it maybe has an inch, inch and a half on there, and if you go all the way down and you keep going, look at what you got. You got fuel line, you got a brake line right beneath that, you have transmission lines, fluid lines and you have braces that you could just cut right off. That metal's only 18 gauge. I mean it is that thick and it doesn't take much for that blade to go through so as soon as I feel it go through 
I just keep running along the edge because you bust through all that fuel everywhere, you can have an explosion, you can have all kinds of problems. So there you go. I'm gonna learn you a couple of tree things. See this floor, how it, it's not coming off right here even though I've cut through? This floor was spot welded probably to a bracket underneath. It's probably spot welded to that, that's why it's not coming off. Because from the factory, that seam right here that goes all along here, these are two pieces of steel together. You can see that piece and that piece. And then if you come all the way up here, you can see See that seam right there? This entire, that black is a seam sealer. This entire thing was a floor pan. So from here to there, from there to there was all one giant piece that was spot welded in. They don't weld it all the way like a seam. They'll put the whole floor pan in and then they'll have brackets like that, like that, and underneath that they'll lay the floor in and then they spot weld. Tick, 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 tick 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 and then they put sealer over it so they don't have to lay a whole continuous bead which would cost money heats the metal up could warp it and everything but technically the 100 percent right way to do it would be to undo all these spot welds take this whole floor pan out put a whole new one in like the whole giant thing but we we can't do all that that's not even You can see better what I'm talking about here about it being two different floors. They just put one over the top of the other one, tack it and seam seal it. You can see this floor right here, it rusted from the top down, not the bottom up because this had a factory undercoating over the whole underneath of the floor and the underneath actually looks pretty decent but if you flip it over, you know, that's where it came from the top down, probably from the mice and the pee from the mice and the carpet and the insulation gets wet and it holds water on top of the floor pans and it goes from the top down. A curve up in a corner is, that's really difficult to remake. So my idea is that we cut it here, cut it here. You can lay this flat, you can lay that flat and you can cut it in the center and you can lay that piece flat and then you can pin around it and then you know uh, it's hard to maybe say while I'm talking about it but then you can fold it back up you know what I'm saying just give me a minute there we go Whew, it's shiny dang Cutting it makes it to where I can fold it down. I can fold this down and I can fold that down and I can fold that down whereas if it's all together you can't push it out. So now that I can lay it all flat you can cut, cut, cut and then fold it all back together and have your curve. Dad's over here getting our bead roller ready. We just stick it in the vise and uh, just go. And I'm over here with the floor pan. I got it vise gripped to the metal so it doesn't move around. 
and I'll go ahead and draw it out real nice and professional like oh. might have ourselves a somewhat professional looking floor pan by the end of this whole situation and when you're drawing it out to go a little bit bigger than what you drew it out as because you can always uh, cut your floor pan inside the car when you lay it down to meet the extra metal but you can't make your floor pan bigger once you've cut it so better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it kind of situation also uh, we just got our PO box open I'll, I'll put the thing up here where it's at it's 1772 I wish they would have gave me 1776 I was a couple off but 1772 uh, Cortero AZ 857 something but I'll put it up here if you guys want to send dad something, me something, or us something, or whatever. We already did get one piece of fan mail from a guy named Rick. He also has a YouTube channel, RC Industry. And so yeah, thank you for sending that, Rick. We, we appreciate that. got to put the factory bends in it that it had because it curved up some so that's what we're doing right now we're using this railroad iron and a piece of wood and just kind of bending it into shape ready yeah yeah I'd say go more try to keep all right go back over here Do it in the middle again. Please. There you go. There you go. So are we exactly on the edge of the metal? Yeah. Keep going. It was a pretty sharp bend. Farther on the, on the railroad iron. No, the other, you're, the other way. Over here, farther. No. What? Over that way. Okay. Yeah. I think we need to go back that way a little bit with the whole piece of metal. Here's floor pan number one. It's kind of a mock up. We're going to have to do some fitting and whatnot, but. You can see the corner idea did pretty well. Um, that's looking good. Cut over. I'll probably have to trim a little bit, but we put the bead rolls in it because these were the ones that ran it from the factory. We took this pattern from the other floor, and plus it gives the panel some rigidity so it doesn't tin can when you put your, uh, your foot on it. So do a little bit more fine tuning, and uh, we can move on to the other three. So we got it pretty well mocked up on the car as best we can. We drew where the brackets are underneath and we're gonna drill the hole so that when we put it in we can spot weld it again. Is that all? One more. One more? All right. So, we're pretty we're pretty close on our floor here-ish kind of thing. No matter how well you think you cut these, it's never it's never 100%. And what we're going to have to do line up the top because the top lines up pretty well. Put a tack in it and then just start you know whipping it into place because our bends aren't I mean a hundred percent see how it's hanging up here we'll have to bend it down and probably fold these ends over a little bit and kind of just work it in I mean you know they're made from 100 percent scratch so that too hot Too 
hot? A little bit. Alright, down. So here's what we had to work with in the beginning. And here's what it looks like now. So we still got some welding to do on it, some grinding to do, but there you go. There's your nice bead rolled floor. You can see these bead rolls right here. Two, two, and two. You know, about like factory. We're gonna have to cut a piece out and weld it there. It was just too complicated of a bend to do all in one go. So we'll make another piece for that. Uh, now, we gotta do three more. I'm trying to do the, the two hardest ones first so that, I don't know, my life gets easier as things go along. But the big problem with this one, this one's going to be even harder than the first one. This is a really, really pronounced curve. You can see it goes straight up and this is a really tight curve. I would have loved to have cut it out flat, you know, and just made a flat piece. That would have been easiest, but there's literally nothing to weld to. I mean, it's gone up the side. There's nothing you can really do about it except make another one. Okay, so, ready? Mm-hmm. Hold on. Oh. Uh, we gotta go from the other side, because it's, we're hitting the end of our rope. Should we go back just a little bit? Yeah. Okay, we can go the other way. Ready? Yeah. Set that piece of railroad iron on it. Stand on it. Put that railroad iron on it. There you go. It's going. Yeah. All right. Now we can always bend it the other way. How's that? It's good. We can always flatten it out if we need to. Want to do a test bit?
time lapse was going and Dad was cutting and welding and finagling on that floor, I went ahead and cut this one out and we, we beat rolled it so we can just keep on trucking. Right here, right here, right here. Because you did, alright, you know that. Yeah, so what you end up doing is just fitting one side first, welding it in, and then pushing it uh, against another part, cutting it, tacking it in until it's all fitting around in a complete circle, and then you just tack it all the way around. And if you've made it this far into the video, maybe consider subscribing because that really, really helps our channel. It tells YouTube, hey, these are some good old boys. Let's push our, their videos to new audiences because only 5% of our viewers are subscribers. I think that number's lower now because of the heightened views from the shorts. I think it muddies the waters a little bit. But either way, I like to pump those numbers up a little. Yeah, once I get it done, I'll go over it. I'll go underneath of it, kind of knock off the boogers and go get some of that uh, undercoating spread on there. Yeah. You just fine. <laughs> We're coming down the home stretch finally of these floor pans. This is the driver's side front. Uh, this is the last big pan we have to make with bead rolls and bends in it and all that good business. So what we're going to do now is start grinding down some of these welds. We replaced a few more patches that we didn't show in the video just because you guys kind of get the gist. You know what's going on. This was rusted out. That was rusted out. That whole back panel was rusted out. So we made a pan there. Going to grind these welds down, make them look nice. And we're going to seam seal around it and then paint this whole floor like a, it's like a red oxide. Could call it red lead. Our last order of business is to get this tap out that we broke off trying to tap the holes for the seat. All right. Twisting. I mean, oh, here, let me hit it again. Wait a minute. Here, hold on, let me hit it again. Because once it gets up high enough, then we can grab it with the vice grips. Mm -mm. Maybe it needs to come out. Mm. Yeah. Here, let me hit it. Loosen up to work.
about ready to fall out. Here, just go get a punch and red hot and just pop it through there. All right, just tap it through there. It'll, it'll make it fall right out the bottom. All right. Huh. Well, that was the solution to that problem. Just doing a little bit of final cleaning before we paint it up. Want to clean these galleys out of any rust or whatever and clean out that side, scrape off the insulation that was on this tunnel here and, um, you know, just prepping it. Hey, Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Supervisor, here. I've been seeing these TikToks on my feed lately of these old videos from the 30s of how they built the Hoover Dam, and it is good stuff. Yeah, I've been seeing it. You've been seeing it too? Yeah. They had a, they had a roller that was like 20 foot tall that they would put, how they would make the pipes to divert the water. Uh -huh. They would put like two inch thick by like 11 foot wide steel through these rollers and it would just roll them in like a hemisphere and it would take three pieces and they would weld them together and it would make a the pipe. The pipe was like 20 or 30 foot tall. Yeah, what would interest me is there was a company from, I think it was New York, that come out there and set up a complete mm -hmm. building to do it, you mm -hmm. know? They would rappel down there on ropes and jackhammer the face of it and put dynamite in there, you know, and they were just on ropes. We can't we we can't do anything anymore because of the of the rules, you know, of the It's a shame. Yeah, we're completely hamstrung, you know. That was the age of industry. I mean that was truly the age of industry. I, I will admit to you it was dangerous, you know what I mean? I ain't gonna tell you it wasn't. We actually got the job done, you know. I've actually seen stuff on TV, you may have too that when they were building the Hoover Dam, they would only take guys that were certain ages and some guys would go and dye their hair to try to make themselves look younger because one day they'd go in there and they'd say, no, you're too old, we can't take you. And, and then this was the depression. Yeah, and they'd go home and dye their hair and make themselves look younger and the next day they'd go in there and say, okay, yeah, you're hired. <laughs> really? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So what we're going to use to coat this floor, uh, Rusty Metal Primer Ultimate Finish. It's about the same color as this red lead they used to use. My dad's uh, painted a spot right here yesterday and you can't even tell. It's the same exact color. So this is as close to factory as, as you can get. Wipe it on with a brush. We'll show you the results. guys here is the finished product floor painted up she's sitting here drying see now if you look at it you can hardly tell where the seam is and that floor that was the worst one where we had to actually form it upwards looks pretty good I and mean, I'm pretty happy with that I can't even tell where the seam is on that side and then coming up to the front same thing uh, looks pretty friggin decent bead rolls look nice the driver's side and uh, yeah, this paint went on pretty thick. And then the seat will bolt there. You'll cover it up and it'll be like it never happened. Well, Supervisor Boo approving of the job. But just remember, this is what we had to work with. These are the floors that we cut out of there. Absolutely nothing there. The seat belts were still bolted to these. Passenger side rear, driver side rear. We don't even have the driver side front because it came out in so many pieces. We don't even have a complete floor to go off of. And then here's the uh, passenger side front, um, you know, absolutely <clears throat> nothing there to work with. So there you go. She went from zero to hero. 
There is still plenty more to do on this car. We still have to do the front windshield because it's cracked, can't have that. So we actually already have a windshield in the windshield gasket. So we will put a new windshield in it. Uh, we want to fix this right here, pull it out, uh, hit it out, something like that. Want to get that straighter. Um, I, we have some more taillight bezels coming in the mail because these ones, even though we used them and kind of straightened them out, they're still pretty, pretty bad. And there was a guy online that had a few um, that we were able to locate. And I'll show you up here. We only have one headlight uh, bezel. Some of these headlight buckets don't have the brackets to screw the headlight bezel onto. So we were able to locate all the headlight bezels and some more buckets that have the mounts to actually bolt the uh, aluminum bezel to. So we'll, we'll be able to finish up the grill with all four bezels and screwed on there all correct. So bezels, windshield, tail lights, couple dents. Make sure you are subscribed, like this video, drop a comment, and thank you guys for 50,000 subscribers. Um, you know, at the ending of this video, before I edit it up, uh, basically the shorts, the shorts I've been putting out on the 46 International have helped uh, with the subscriber count a lot. So we just passed the 50,000 mark. Dad and me really appreciate it, and we, and we thank you guys for watching.